When we went to Malibu to record Seeing Red, uh, we knew we had a limited amount of time. Uh, we had to record, uh, well, we had to, we had to produce, record, and, and mix all the songs by the time we left. And we were only there for a week because that was all the amount of time that Kevin could, could give us. So we, uh, we knew that we were, were pressed for time. Uh, when we got there, uh, Kevin, has, Kevin has a very strict schedule. He only works uh, about like 10 to 6. That's it. Like he does not, he's not the kind of guy who wants to be in the studio all day. He wants to work it like a normal job. And uh, he, he works quickly and efficiently. And when he's on, he's on. But when he's off, he's like, I'm leaving and whatever. So uh, the first few days we were there, he, he, you know, everything was great. We were having a great time. It was fun. And uh, he told us, he was like, you know, if you guys want to do more, you guys should just keep recording. He's like, just keep doing stuff. He's like, when I leave, just, you know, the engineers here, just tell them to keep doing stuff. He's paid, you know? So, uh, so it was cool that he trusted us enough. He was like, yeah, I want you guys, you guys seem like you're in a real creative zone. And just because I'm not here doesn't mean that you can't do whatever. So we said, okay. So we had some other songs that we had, we had, you know, that were in the running to be, uh, on seeing red. And he said, let's record them. So, uh, so we ended up laying down the track for Voyeurism, and, uh, which is this song uh, uh, that did not end up on Seeing Red, but uh, we laid down the tracks for it. Kevin came in and he said, oh my God, this song's great. Like, I love this. I love the hook. I love the, the line. It's great. So we made some changes and we, we cut it with Kevin and added some, some overdubs and whatever, and Kevin was totally into it. Um, I like the song. I think it's great. Uh, I, I, I think it's a little too poppy it's a little too normal for me like I, I don't know i don't know if normal is the right word but it was a little too uh predictable but it's got a good hook it's got a great guitar riff and uh the lyrics are fun um i, I think it's just a it's just a fun song it just didn't really fit on the ep so uh we didn't put it on there we did play it live a few times um uh just for the fun of it but uh, we we didn't uh it didn't really go much further than that but uh, it's exciting to have it uh be on uh, on, on, on this uh, collection, uh, Keep the Wolves at Bay. Uh, the lyrics are, are heavily inspired, uh, not by anything personal for me, but by uh, this song by Massive Attack. Um, uh, and in, in the song, he has this, this repeated line where he says, I was looking to see if you were looking back at me to see me looking back at you. And I remember hearing that for the first time and loving it and thinking, you know, wow, I'm, you know, I love Massive Attack. I'm a huge fan already. And uh, the line was so, was so iconic because it, made, it immediately puts an image in your mind. And great lyrics tend to do that. They tend to just immediately put an image in your mind of, of what's going on. Like he's at a club or at a party or something like that. And he's looking at the girl, but he's not looking at her. He's looking at her to see if she's looking at him, but he's looking at her to see if she's looking at him, looking at her. It just, it just became this kind of like joke. And I remember hearing the line and thinking about that and then writing these lyrics out of like this person, you know, maybe not me or I, I don't know, somebody seeing this person and, and having this like voyeuristic, uh, you know, uh, this voyeuristic attitude towards looking at them just doing whatever it is that they're doing at, you know, a party or a club or just, you know, walking around. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was where the, the lyrics came from. But uh, yeah, uh, a great song, really interesting. I think it's, it's cool to hear um, what we were doing in the studio when we didn't have a multi-million dollar producer around telling us what to do. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a cool representation of what, uh, of what the band would sound like in its off time if we were just fucking around in, in a studio that, you know, uh, that Rick Rubin was going to be in the next day. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Scott from Double Thing. Is this one of your favorite songs? Leave a comment about it below. I hope you're enjoying these track-by-track -track videos for all the songs on the new collection of Double Think Music called Keep the Wolves at Bay. If you would like to get a copy of this retrospective album, please click the link in the description of this video to head to our Indiegogo page where you'll be able to reserve your copy. Hope to see you guys soon.